Hello, I am Bert Pastori. This is Pastori time. Hi. Um, I hope you're all well. I am coming to you today with a a book haul. These are books that I've gathered over the last couple of months. Uh, some I treated myself to. Uh, some I got as birthday presents from Sean and from a few friends um, and some, yeah, I got a gift voucher for my birthday and I treated myself too. Um, so let's get into them, shall we? Do you remember when I read Ted Lewis, GBH, and how much I loved it? It was really good and it put me in a bit of a sort of a mood to explore the world of London gangsters more thoroughly and there's um, an author that I've always wanted to try which is Derek Raymond and I had a friend when I worked in the bookshop that really enjoyed Derek Raymond's books and I know he, that he wrote a series which I will probably sort of delve into as well but I wanted to start with a standalone by him so I tracked down this one called uh, The Crust on Its Uppers which is a early 60s standalone novel. Uh, it says one of the greatest London novels where Chelsea Bohemia meets the underworld. Um, this just sounds really, really good. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be in the same sort of ballpark as Ted Lewis, hopefully. It's a tremendous black comedy of Chelsea gangland written and set in the early 60s on the cusp of swing in London. There's something about that early 60s pre- Beatles pre Swing in London um, that I'm really fascinated in in books. Um, just that little sort of turning point between the 50s and 60s where there's these new ideas coming through, but everything's still kind of grey and a bit dismal. Uh, so yeah, this is an exciting one. Then I treated myself. Did I get myself this one? You did. Yeah, I got myself this one. There's been some confusion as to um, books which I thought I got myself and it ended up that Sean had got for me. So we'll try and clarify as we go through. Um, Play It As It Lays by Joan Didion. I've not read any Joan Didion fiction. And this is from 1970. It's got the wonderful Eve Babbitts and Duchamp cover playing chess, uh, which Sean, you know, had some issues with maybe thinking that Joan Didion might not like her competitor, uh, Eve Babbitt. Is that correct? Well, also, like, it doesn't say it's Eve Babbitt anywhere. It doesn't say it's Eve Babbitt and anywhere. I'm like, you know, Just Eve confused. needs a bit more respect, doesn't she? Eve needs more respect than this. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a wonderful cover. Um, yeah. I realise Joan probably had no say in this. Yeah. But I'd imagine Joan would be a bit annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> Your thoughts on this, please. Um, I love Jane Didion's writing. I think she's an absolute master of like clarity and um, just writing in such a way that it almost feels like it already existed before she wrote it. Do you know what I mean? Like um, there's like no um, padding in her writing. She's, she's such a clear thinker and I'm really interested to see how that works out in a novel. This is a book about a um, uh, an actress, I think in her 30s, who is um, divorced, it says dislocated from her friends and anaesthetised to pain and pleasure. She takes a road trip. Um, it's written in really short kind of um, little chunks. And I'm really excited to get to this one. Thank you, Bert, for getting me this. <laughs> now, Sean has been listening to um, the Book Riot podcast on her little rambles around town um, recently. And she's been really enjoying them. And we watch a lot of the Book Riot sort of um, booktube stuff. And is it Rebecca Chinsky? Yeah, Chinsky. Chinsky, um, who used to do a lot of the videos. And we really like her. And she is involved in the podcast. And Sean said that she heard her talking um, about books that had got her through the lockdown period. And she had mentioned um, the essays of E.B. White. Uh, lovely cover um, and yeah so E.B. White is obviously the author of Charlotte's Web have you read Charlotte's Web? I didn't really read children's books as a child so I've missed all of the children's classics I haven't read any of them 
I read the Phantom Tollbooth. And I had like Disney stories, but I didn't have any like of the sort of the, you know, the, the classics. Um, but I have read, um, we've got like a little book, which is um, Here is New York by him, which is his essay, I think from the 40s, 50s, about New York, which I really loved. So um, that's included in here. Um, this is all stuff that he wrote for the New Yorker. And it sort of spans subject matter and, you know, decades. Um, and I just was just really glad to get a book that I'd never heard of um, that looks fantastic. And it was a really lovely gift from from the Shanster. Thank you very much. Um, I think this is going to be lovely. She also got me for my birthday McClue by Atessa Moshfeg. This is her first novella. Um, massive fan of Atessa Moshfeg. We um, also have her forthcoming, a proof of her forthcoming book in the house. So I really would like to read that too. This is a, like a pirate story, which I'm 100% in, in, into. This is set in Salem, Massachusetts in 1851. It looks like a sort of quite dark, um, I guess what you'd expect from a Tessa Moshfeg. Um, spiky little novel. I'm interested to see what her first novel reads like. Um, as I really loved Eileen and um, my year of rest and relaxation. So, McGlue. Another friend of mine um, bought me or got me this for my birthday. And this is um, a collection of short stories by Joanna Walsh. And it's called uh, Worlds from the Word's End, which is a really confusing title. Um, and it's a collection of short stories. Joanna Walsh is an author that's kind of been on my radar for a while. I, I bought a book by her quite a few years ago, which I haven't read, called Hotel, which I think is it's non-fiction. It's about, um, I think, her going through like a divorce and spending some time living in hotels. That sounds really good. She has a new book out, which also looks pretty interesting. Um, but I think this would be a really nice way to dip my toes into her writing. Um, and yeah, just a really lovely gift. It's on um, and other stories. And yeah, just another one which I probably wouldn't have picked up myself and which I'm really excited to get to. So I recently did a video on some of my favorite black poets. And in that video, I mentioned Terence Hayes. Um, so Terence Hayes is a contemporary poet. He's written quite a few uh, collections and this is his most recent, and this is a, a, cl a collection that I mentioned in that video. Um, and I've read a lot of it online, but I really wanted to have it and to sit with it. This is American Sonnets from My Past and Future Assassin. It's, uh, it's the winner of the National Book Award. Um, yeah, it's just a really interesting, powerful voice in the poetry world at the moment. Um, I just, like I said, I just really like it. I wanted to read it. I wanted to have it. And this is going to be fantastic. We all love Charlotte from Tired Mama Tries to Read. And she's just so lovely and sent me out of the blue for my birthday just this amazing looking book called Woven Stone by Simon J. Ortiz. Thank you so much for this, Charlotte. Um, this is a collection of um, poetry by... Um, Simon J. Ortiz, and it's, um, it says he's widely regarded as one of um, America's most important Native American poets. Um, it spans his 30-year career, so a lot of these poems are um, what well, basically it gathers together from all of his sort of various books, which sort of span the 70s and 80s. There's a really fascinating introduction, um, which gives some background to it. I've sort of skipped, skimmed through it just to get a sort of a taste of what it is. And it's absolutely brilliant. Um, it does remind me of that kind of um, maybe sort of Gar Gary Snyder-esque kind of poetry. Um, maybe Lou Welch. It's that kind of um, nature-y, almost um, zen-like poetry. Um, it, sort of, it seems very sort of concise. It seems to sort of... Um, can be quite sort of descriptive in a very sort of clean way. Um, I don't really know how to explain it, but um, I'm loving it. So I'm going to sort of dip in and out of this for the rest of the year. 
and uh, yeah, thank you, Charlotte. I mentioned Ted Lewis already. I think I talked quite a lot about Ted Lewis to Sean while I was reading GBH. Um, uh, GBH is one of the best books I've read this year so far, and as an early birthday present, Sean treated me to Plender by Ted Lewis. This is the other book that they've recently reissued on um, No Exit Press. No Exit Press is a really, really good crime. I don't know if they just do crime, they might do other stuff, but I read a lot of their crime um, stuff. They also publish uh, James Salis and Jason Starr, like two of my favourite crime writers. So they have reissued this one as well. It's another kind of uh, crime masterwork from the author of Get Carter. These aren't going to be for everyone. If you're into that kind of slightly sleazy uh, 70s British uh, underworld kind of feel, give them a go because they are brilliant. Um, I did show the picture of him on his typewriter last time, but I'm going to show it again. <laughs> Yeah, it's a story about two guys that grow up in a small town in Lincolnshire and it follows their kind of um, their lives as they kind of sort of shadow each other. It's got extortion, blackmail, intimidation. It's going to be it's going to be a nice, you know, as you see, sleazy crime novel. Thank you, Sean. You're welcome. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? You're welcome. You said, yeah. I um, have been looking out for some books by Gail Jones recently, who I came across, I'm not sure, in an article I read online. And they've recently reissued um, her free novels on the Virago Modern Classics range. And this is her second novel, um, Ava's Man, or Eva's Man. Um, so, yeah, so she wrote a book called... Um, Corridora, Corregidora, sorry. Uh, in the mid 70s, this came just after in 1976, and then she wrote a book called The Healing. I think that was much later, like maybe 90s even. Um, and they've all been reissued um, by Virago. I went for this one because I just kind of I like the sound of it. It's about um, a, a woman called Eva, who from the very start we know has killed her lover. She's in a psychiatric ward. And this book sort of takes us back through her life. I think it's going to be a very heavy read. I think it's um, going to be trigger warning heavy. I think there is, it's basically a look into this woman's life of abuse. Um, it's going to be like um, what it's like to live in a female body, in a black body, and to be basically um, used by men throughout her life. And yeah, so heavy going but I think it's going to be really really good um, Tayari Jones uh, says that she's a literary giant and one of the absolute her, one of her absolute favorite authors um, Is she American? she's American yeah uh, yeah so it says on the back uh, Gail Jones is one furious lacerating writer you don't read her easily and you can't forget her at all hyper real and traumatic as this novel is it's one that's been waiting to be written really eager to get to Finally, as you may or may not know, I have recently read um, the Kim Adonisio um, Selected Poems. This is Wild Nights. Uh, this is on Blood Axe Books. This is the first kind of UK collection of um, Kim Adonisio's poetry. So it collects from her various collections sort of through the 90s and 2000s. Um, really, really enjoyed this. She writes about um, drinking a lot. Um, but there's a real humour to her writing, um, but it's very much, especially in kind of the sort of early 2000s collections, which I really enjoyed the most, I think, in this, very much about that pursuit of um, oblivion and just that feeling, that rush of, um, of alcohol, of that sort of place that it puts you where you feel alive. Do you know what I mean? Um, so she writes about that really well. And I was like, well, I need to read more by her. Um, Sean got me Bukowski in a sundress. This is um, Confessions from a Writing Life. It's a collection of her essays. Um, 
and yeah I think I really like to sort of read this other perspective of her writing love the cover um, it says irreverent razor sharp personal essays chronicles her wanderings through middle age uh, fueled by passion perseverance and vodka martinis so the term Bukowski in a sundress was um, given to her by a snarky um, critic it says um, as kind of a you know how you know male critics like to put everyone in a box and especially like slightly belittle these female writers um, but she's embraced it and I can kind of see the connection there uh, to a certain extent um, but I, I've seen really good reviews of this book it says like Anne Lamont Adonisia seems to sense how to pull back from sentimentality be it with humour, honesty or clarity of vision. I also know that Phoebe Wallerbridge is a huge fan of Kim Adonisio. Um, yeah, a good find. Well done, me. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the books that are newest in my life. Um, I have got a few more coming. Um, I have looked over a lot of the books that I've read in the first half of this year because we've got at the end of this month we tend to do our favourite books of the year so far like our top tens for the first half of 2020 and uh, I haven't read as many um, black authors or you know authors of colour as I would like to I think that will change in the second half of the year I feel really happy about that and um, I'm really enjoying what's happening at the moment and I really hope it carries on in terms of like we've had um, Rennie Addo Lodge who's just become the first British black woman to top the book charts in the UK um, it's awful that that's happened at this time in history but you know a small good step towards where we should be um, I really like this whole sort of um, blanket buy-in of, of black authors to sort of tell the publishing world we need more of them we need them to be higher paid we need them to get better publishing deals we need um much more representation in bookshops um yeah so i think that is something that's become instilled in me and i think in a lot of people and it's going to be just an absolute pleasure to see that sort of hopefully sort of branching out and fulfilling itself take good care of yourselves water your plants um eat healthily um, go for walks, wear masks, um, and be kind to yourselves.